Hey, what's up everyone? I'm going to be talking about how to construct a safety diagram using the Modified Observe firing chart. All right, before I dive into the actual safety diagram itself and how to apply that and make a safety fan on your plotting board, I'm first going to talk about the document that you see here on your screen. All right, so we have an artillery and mortar safety record. Um, depending on what branch of service you are in or where you are ge geographically in the world, uh, this may look a little bit different, but at the end of the day, um, the end state is the same. All right. Um, the one I have in front of me is specifically for Fort Benning. Uh, it's the Fort Benning Form 210 TAC 4 TAC 2 Romeo. At the top there, that date is the date in which that range control approved all this data or all this information on this form. All right, the firing point number is the firing point number that they have associated with this specific firing location. All right, so firing point 78, and then you have the Hartel OP, which is just the observation point or observation post associated with this location. All right, the weapons are any of the weapons that are authorized to be fired at this location. All right, so in my case, all I have are my 81 millimeter mortars, and then it tells you the exact grid in which you should be establishing your gun position. All right, the elevation is just the elevation in which you are at at that firing point location, all right, or the altitude, and then the fuses, it will tell you exactly what fuses are authorized per this range. All right, the weapon projectile, or the rounds that are authorized to be used, and then it has your left limit in mills, your right limit in mills, your minimum and maximum ranges, your minimum and maximum charges, and then your max ordnance in meters or in feet. All right, so in this case, mine are in meters. And then it spells out exactly what is what pertaining to each specific ammo type. All right, so I have the M374 Alpha 2 and the M375 Alpha 2 um, the first one being high explosive and the second one being white phosphorus. Now, if you remember in my last couple of videos, I've talked a little bit about 300 series ammunition and um, how HE and white phosphorus are ballistically compatible. All right. With that being said, if you are dealing with this document and you're constructing a safety fan or a safety diagram, a separate safety fan has to be prepared for each firing position and each type of mortar and ammunition. The only way around this is if the ballistics of the rounds are compatible. All right, so if I had more than one firing position, I would have to create a separate safety fan. If I had two different types of mortars that I'm firing, I would have to create a different safety fan and then if I wasn't using 300 series ammunition and these two rounds here in my example were not ballistically compatible I would have to create a separate safety fan all right but with my example everything checks out therefore I do not have to create more than one safety fan all right so we're all good there Below all this information, you'll have special instructions. All right, so this is anything, any special message from range control that they're letting you know it needs to be in place either prior to you firing or times associated to specific events um, that may hinder your ability to fire. So as you can see here, that you must have roadblocks in place prior to firing. And then obviously they'll attach some sort of documentation um, exactly letting you know where those need to be set up at. And then in here it's saying 
that there's mandatory ceasefire time from 12 to 1300 for downrange maintenance. All right. Um, obviously, there's a lot of different things that they can input in that special instructions. These are just to name a few. Um, so don't think that if you don't see that just these three, um, that they don't apply because they absolutely do. All right, then the biggest thing here is that bottom right hand portion. It's letting you know who from the range control approved this document. All right, so if this was real, obviously it would not say check or hold, but here we are, here I am, so we're sending it. All right, now that I have this information from my mortar safety record that I obtained from range control, I can go ahead and start working or start diving into my site, my safety diagram. All right, um, if you went and grabbed yourself a Thules from Goons Up and Mission, Mission Essential Gear, um, you can follow along with me here on page 23. All right, that's where the safety diagram starts and it works its way all the way to page 26. All right, I love this book simply for this, the, the fact that it breaks it down step by step and it still gives you the formulas that you can utilize to be successful. All right, so I'm just going to keep that up there for the time being um, and then I will walk you through just the documents that I have on this handout here. All right, so I have this information from range control. I'm going to start plugging it into the safety diagram depiction that I have. So there's really eight key components um, that you can extract from here and put into your safety diagram. Now, as you can see here, I already filled out this information. All right, just to save time for this video. Um, but you would absolutely have to do this yourself. You can see I pulled my charge nine. That's my max charge. My min charge is zero. My left limit azimuth is zero four four zero mils. And my right limit azimuth of one two four zero mils. My weapon type I circled as my 81 millimeter mortar. I have my maximum range of 4,000 here, my minimum range of 3,000, and then my firing position coordinates of Golf Lima 0038-6140. All right, so as you can tell, there's still a good amount of information that is not filled out yet. All right, so that's why I have this handy dandy formulas on the left hand side here to help me and I will show you exactly how to fill this out. Um, understand if you're the Marine Corps, you have something similar to this. Obviously, um, it's broken down a little bit different, but the, the end state of all this is the same. All right. The big, the big ticket item here, first and foremost, is we need to determine our direction of fire and our mounting azimuth. All right, so that's going to be our first step before we do anything. And if you see at the top left-hand portion of this document here, um, it tells you exactly how to do that. Now, I'm going to run through uh, maybe one or two just examples of how to determine the direction of fire. Um, and then I will dive into the actual information provided here, but I just want to let you know um, a, di a couple different ways that you can do this. All right, so say I have um, a left limit azimuth of 5,600 and I have a right limit azimuth of 6,300. I'm going to add those two together. I'm going to obtain that sum and then I'm going to divide that sum by two, and that answer will be my direction of fire. All right, so once again, the example provided, I have a left limit azimuth of 5600. I have a right limit azimuth of 6300. 
I add those two together, that sum of 11,900. All right, I'm gonna take that, divide it by two to get a direction of fire of 5950. All right, so once again, my direction of fire in this case um, works out perfectly because it ends in the nearest 50. So in order to obtain my mounting azimuth, we are, <clears throat> excuse me, we already know we're just going to round that direction of fire to the nearest 50 mils. All right, so in that example, my mounting azimuth would be the same as my direction of fire of 5950. All right, now let's say my right limit azimuth is smaller than my left limit azimuth. All right. Um, a lot of times in the Marine Corps, uh, you hear this as described as opposite side zero. And all that means is your left limit azimuth. So I'm index zero here, as you can see. Uh, my left limit azimuth starts on my left hand side and then I have zero. My right limit azimuth is on the right hand side, so they determine it to be opposite side zero um, for safety diagram example. All right, but if I'm working through this and I need to obtain my direction of fire, I'm going to add 6400 to the right limit azimuth. All right, so that, that smaller number and then I'm going to subtract the left limit azimuth from the right limit azimuth and divide by two. All right, so with that being said, let's say I have a left limit azimuth of 6300. All right, and I have a right limit azimuth of 0300. So I said I'm going to add 6400 to my right limit azimuth, right? It's going to give me a, going to give me a sum of 6700. Zero, zero. And then I need to subtract my left limit azimuth from that sum that I just obtained. All right, so now I subtract 6300 zero, zero from that 6700 zero, zero I just got to get me 400. So lastly, I need to take that 400 that I just figured out, and I need to divide that by two to give me 200. Now I can either subtract this 200 from my right limit azimuth, or if I wanna keep simple math, in this case, or I can add it to my left limit azimuth, but just understand if I were to do that, if I add 200 to 6,300, it's going to give me 6,500. Obviously there's only 6,400 mils in a circle, but common sense tells us that that would be 0100. So that would be your answer, or you're simply just going to subtract it from your right limit azimuth of 0300 to give you a direction of fire of 0100. All right, so you can do that both ways. Um, just understand if you're subtracting it, you're subtracting it from your right limit azimuth. Um, if you are adding it, you're adding it to your left limit azimuth. So in this case, it works out perfectly. Our direction of fire is already at the nearest 50 mils, um, so we don't have to do anything crazy to get our mounting azimuth. All right, now for this specific equation here. All right, we have a left limit azimuth of zero four zero, sorry, correction, zero four four zero and a right limit azimuth of one two four zero. Now, if I come over here to my formula page you'll see I have two separate ones. I have when the right limit is larger than the left limit, and then I have when the right limit 
is smaller than the left limit. Now my right limit is larger than my left, so I'm going to be utilizing this first equation here. All right, so my left limit azimuth is 0, 4, 4, 0. My right limit azimuth is 1, 2, 4, 0. I'm going to add those two together all right, to get a sum of my calculator says 1680. Once I have that sum, I'm going to divide it to divide it by 2 to give me my direction of fire. All right, so in this case, my direction of fire would be 0840. Right? And we already know once we have our direction of fire in order to obtain our mounting azimuth we need to round that to the nearest 50. All right, so my mounting azimuth would be 0850. Now, once I have that information, I can bring that over to my safety diagram depiction here. All right, so I said my direction of fire was 0840, and my mounting azimuth is 08. Five to zero. All right, my direction of fire rounded to the nearest 50 gives me my amount of gasmith. Now that I have this information, um, let's say I determine my, we'll just knock it out while I'm here, uh, my referred deflection to be 2800. All right, 2800. Now I need to determine these numbers here. All right. And all these are, are the deviations. And I will talk about um, how to obtain that right now. All right, so to determine your left and right limit deviations, you're going to compare your left and right limit azimuths to your mounting azimuth. All right, so I'm comparing my left limit azimuth to my mounting azimuth and my right limit azimuth to my mounting azimuth. The difference between those two is going to be my deviation. All right, so let's think about it this way with this depiction I have here. This center line here is my mounting azimuth. This line here is my right limit azimuth. My right deviation are the mills between the two. All right, and then same thing here. My mounting azimuth, my left limit azimuth, I need to determine the difference in mills between the two to get my left deviation. All right, now, the easiest way to do that is just subtract the smaller from the larger. So I have a mounting azimuth of 0850. I subtract my left limit azimuth of 0440 to get a difference or a deviation of 410. So that would be my left deviation in mills of 410. Right now I'm going to do the same on the right hand side. So I'm going to take my right limit azimuth because it's larger of 1240, subtracting my mounting azimuth to get a sum or a difference or a deviation of 390 still working in mills, and that would be my right deviation. All right, now that I have these two numbers filled out, I can move into my left and right deflections. Now, in order to obtain my left limit deflection and my right limit deflection, I'm going to compare my two deviations 
um, obviously keeping them to the respective sides to my refer deflection of 2800. All right, so working with my left hand side first, um, obviously we already know if we're dealing with deflections, we're going to be utilizing our lovely acronym LARS, right? So left, add, right, subtract. So I'm going to take that refer deflection of 2800 and I'm working with my left side. So I'm going to add, right? So we have left, add, and then right, subtract. So I'm going to add my, sorry, my left deviation of 410 to my refer deflection to get a left limit deflection of 3210. All right, so once again, I took my refer deflection, I applied my left deviation. I know that I'm utilizing Lars because this is deflections here. So left add, I added 410 to my refer deflection to give me a left limit deflection of 3210. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the right hand side. I'm going to take my refer deflection, I'm going to apply my right deviation of 390. I'm thinking about my acronym Lars. This time I'm going to the right, I'm dealing with my right hand side. So I'm going to subtract that from my refer deflection to get a right limit deflection of 2410. All right, now that I have all of this information, I need to obtain um, probably the most confusing thing for a lot of in individuals. All right, so. I do not have a tabular firing table um, at my disposal right now, um, so I can't show you an example um, of, of how to obtain this information, so I'll explain it to the best of my ability. All right, if you open up your firing tables, remember I'm utilizing 300 series ammo. Uh, we'll go off of the HE M374 Alpha 2. Um, if you go into part one of your firing table, and then typically depending on how many people have messed with this specific TFT, if you back off just one page, um, you should have a charge versus range paper in front of you. All right, so this breaks it up with every charge that you have for this specific round type, and then the maximum range and the minimum range per each charge. All right, so you can get a, an idea of what you need to look for um, for this information here. So I need to figure out a charge in my minimum elevation for my max charge of nine, and then my charge, my max elevation of my minimum charge of zero. All right, so just looking at my chart versus range, my charge versus range, um, I can take my minimum charge first or maximum charge, it doesn't really matter. Um, but let's say I wanna work with this information here first. So I take my minimum charge and I see how many of those charges can effectively reach 300 meters. All right, so in this case I look in charge zero, charge one, and charge two can all effectively reach 300. So I can go ahead and write charge zero, one, and two on my safety diagram here. Now I can also look at my maximum range of 4,000. And I know the max charge that I can reach, or max charge I can fire is nine. So obviously I can't exceed charge nine anyways um, but for example if you're at a range um, and you're dealing with like 800 series ammo we know we're dealing with charge 4 there right um, but to say you for that specific firing location 
um, the max charge you have is two. Um, you will not be pulling any information for charge three or four because you're not authorized to shoot charge three and four for that example. All right, but my max charge is nine for 300 series. That is my max charge. So I'm going to look at my charge versus range and I'm going to see what charges can effectively reach 4,000 meters. In this case, it's charge eight and charge nine. So I can go ahead and write that on my document here. Now I need to obtain my maximum elevation for my minimum range and I need to find my minimum elevation for my maximum range. All right, so I know I said charge zero can reach 300 meters. So I'm going to open to table D, my basic data page of my firing table, charge zero first, right? Working lowest to, to largest. I'm going to go down to a range in my column one of 300 because that is my minimum range. And I'm going to pull that elevation of 1168. I'm going to do the same thing for charge one and charge two. All right, so column one, my range, table D, range of 300, pulling that max elevation of 1451. And then lastly, for my minimum range, I have charge two, column one, 300, Elevation one four nine eight. All right, I'm going to explain this um, in case this confuses anyone for whatever reason. All right, people get confused when it says max elevation for a minimum range. Why am I not pulling a max elevation for my max range? Here is why this is, why it is. All right, so I have a minimum range of here, right? Of 300 meters. I'm saying for charge one, the max elevation that I can fire is 1451. Now, if I fire a, a greater elevation of 1451, that's going to increase my cannon. All right, so I'm here, charge one at 1451 elevation. If I increase my elevation, it's going to lift my cannon, which then decreases my range. Therefore, I'm firing closer than 300 meters. Now, same thing for my my maximum range, right? So I have a maximum range of 4,000. I'll go ahead and fill this information out first, um, and then I'll explain it for max range as well. All right, so maximum range, charge eight. I'm going to go column one to a range of 4,000, and I'm going to pull that elevation of 0941. All right, same thing for charge nine. Column one, 4,000, pulling the el elevation of 1049. All right, so same thing. If I'm at charge eight and I go lower than my minimum elevation of 0941, I'm going to shoot at a greater distance than 4,000 meters, all right? So I'm here at 0941. If I decrease my elevation, I decrease the angle in which the cannon is facing, which in turn increases the range in which my round is traveling, all right? So that is why we have minimum elevation for a maximum range and a maximum elevation for a minimum range. Um, I hope that little example helped you visualize exactly why it is why it is. 
All right. Um, if I had a specific ammo type that used time or fuse settings, I can go ahead and put that information there. Um, but in this case, I'm just worrying about my HE1 in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it blank. All right, so before I dive into some actions on the plotting board and how you translate this information, um, I just want to go back and kind of to recap on everything that we've talked about. All right, so first and foremost, I was given some information here on my mortar safety record from range control. I plug and played that information here um, as much as I could. Obviously, um, there's still a lot of information that I needed to find out. So the first thing I did was determine my direction of fire. Now, once again, there's two different ways of doing this. In this example, all I did was add the two azimuths together. I took that sum divided by two. That gave me my direction of fire. Rounded that to the nearest 50 mils. That gives me my mounting azimuth. All right. Now, um, I didn't fill it out on here, but all you're going to do is simply take your mounting azimuth, subtract the smaller from the larger, all right? or if your mounting azimuth is smaller than the left limit azimuth, you can add 6400 to your mounting azimuth. And then if your right limit azimuth is smaller than your mounting azimuth, go ahead and add 6400 to that right limit azimuth. All right. So my left limit azimuth was 0, 04. Four zero. That gave me a left deviation of 410. Right limit azimuth. 1240 mounting azimuth 0850 give me a right limit deviation of 390. All right, but just remember that is literally just the difference between these two azimuths. All right, simple math, not to confuse anyone. All right, and then, like I said, for obtaining our right limit and left limit deflections. We're utilizing our acronym LARS here. We have our referred deflection of 2800. Depending on where we're going, if we're going to the left, we're adding, right, subtracting, applying it to our deviations to give us either side deflections. All right, then the rest of the information is pulled off of your firing table. All right. Now, everyone's favorite thing, how to make this look like your safety fan on your plotting board. All right, it's pretty simple. Uh, first and foremost, you have to take your direction of fire, index that, and then you're going to superimpose your refer deflection scale on your plotting board and then you can go from there or you can index zero plot your firing position if you haven't done so already I already have that laid out so I'm going to go ahead and skip that portion alright so I'm going to index my direction of fire of 0840 and then I'm going to superimpose my refer deflection scale of 2800 on my mounting azimuth of 0850. Are still using Lars. Four hundred mils to the right, four hundred mils to the left. Boom. Alright, so I have my referred deflection scale superimposed on my plotting board at my mounting azimuth. Of 0840. Now 
I can either start at my left hand side or my right hand side. Um, I'll just go with my, my left hand side at this point. Um, uh, 0440 for my light, left limit azimuth. All right, so I'm going to index an azimuth of 0440. 0440. I'm going to take my range arm. I'm going to index 0, ensuring that I am nice and parallel, straight up and down from my mortar firing position. I'm going to make a plot at my minimum range of 300 and my maximum range of 4,000 and then I can go ahead and connect the dots here. Alright, so that is my left limit azimuth line depicted on my plotting board. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing on my right limit azimuth. So I have a right limit azimuth of 1, 2, 4, 0. So I'm going to index that on my veneer scale, 1, 2, 4, 0. And then from here, I'm going to make a line straight up and down. Index 0 at my mortar firing position. Make a plot, 300 minimum range. Maximum range, 4,000. Connect the two dots. So that is my right limit azimuth on my plotting board. Now, there's a few different ways you can do this next spot here. All right, so now I need to connect the two ends of my minimum range and my maximum range. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that with just the, the chain of my dog tags, um, but you can use 550 cord, 550 cord guts. Um, you can, if you really want to, rotate your azimuth disc, continue making those dots up top and then connect the dots at the end. Um, this is probably the easiest way you can do it. So I'm just going to hold my pen at 4,000, hold it at my mortar firing position, and then just drag it across to the other end. Now, for my minimum range, I can just take my dog tag here, use the curved edge, and this works, seems to work fairly well for this small little area here. All right, so that is my left limit azimuth, my maximum range, my minimum range, and my right limit azimuth. Now, in order to check yourself, you can go ahead, let's go back to my left limit azimuth. All right, so I had a left limit azimuth of 0440. If I, let's see if I'll skew this down and zoom in so you can see. If I read my deflection, I should have the same deflection if I did my math correctly as what I got with my left limit deflection on my safety diagram work here. So I had a deflection of 3210. I look at my veneer scale and it checks out. All right, now I can do the same thing with my right hand side of 1, 2, Four zero. So my left limit azimuth is index of one two four zero, and I should have a deflection of two four one zero. So I know I in fact mathed correctly. So.
so that checks out. Now, if, let's see, I'll give you an example, of something we already covered. Um, we'll go back to the opposite side zero um, thing that I was explaining. Now, at infantry motor leader course, uh, we call it the, the dumb thumbs method. Um, it's, it's really just a, a quick way to figuring out your direction of fire. Um, obviously, it, it seems to work best if you have whole 100 numbers, right? Um, but let's say I had, in my example, that left limb azimuth of 6,300. Right, so make sure you can see this on the board. All right, so I'm going to put my left thumb at my left limit azimuth of 6300 and I want to take my right thumb and place it on my right limit azimuth of 033 sorry correction 0300 now how I'm going to do this is just alternate thumbs and I'm going to move them both in 100 mils at a time all right, so I'm going to go zero, 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 two, zero, zero, and then where they both meet up gives me my direction of fire of zero, one, zero, zero. And obviously I, I showed earlier that that math still works out. That is just one way. Obviously that was a very bad example because it was only a couple movements, but if I wanted to uh, move it back a couple I could and then I'm just going to walk them in one after the other until I get to where there's only one left and that would be considered my direction of fire all right so for those of us who do, do not understand math well one you're probably in the wrong business but two um, there you go there's a we'll call that the M16 plotting board for dummies all right, that is all I have. Actually, I will show you this. Um, for those of you, where to go? It's on the next page. All right, for those of you who have never filled out a safety T, um, if you're at a range and you compiled the information for a safety diagram, um, you're messed up if you're not passing this information to the gun line. All right, and how you break that up to your squad leaders and the guns is just breaking this information down into a safety T. All right, looks like a T, pretty self-explanatory. All right, now how you go about this um, depends on how many different rounds you're going to be utilizing um, for this specific range. All right, if I have multiple ammo types I'm going to have multiple numbers here all right so in this case I have a minimum elevation of 1027 a minimum elevation of 0885 all right a lot of times when you're doing this um, you can simply just write in the ammo types that that data um, is compatible to um, your deflections, so the information that we gathered here, um, your maximum elevation. All right, so it's saying here this is for illumination. Then it gives you the maximum elevation for charge three, the maximum elevation for charge four. You have your maximum elevation for HE and white phosphorus, and then the minimum time setting um, for the illumination round there. All right, so this is a very good tool um, to simplify the information that you got off of this bad boy here. All right, and then make that understandable to all of your gun monkeys on the gun line into your safety T format here. All right, once again, if you have multiple ammo, you want to 
um, annotate which specific ammo that's for. But if you're only using one, then just annotate exactly what information it is that they're looking at. All right. Uh, once again, if you guys have any questions over any of this information that I've covered, absolutely hit me up um, either on my YouTube channel or my Instagram page, um, check or hold. Um, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like and subscribe this page. That way you get all the videos as soon as I release them. All right, check or hold out.